The Antenna is a film set in dystopian Turkey in an ambiguous time only defined by satellite television watched on tube TVs. It's a surreal movie that's part dark water, part Silent Hill, with hints of 1984 with its foreboding shadows of conformity. It's set in a towering, dilapidated apartment building with its attendant, Mehmet. Mehmet acts like he's neither awake nor sleeping, or perhaps he's dreaming through both. This is what makes him different, and able to explore the depths of the nightmares that lingers in the darkness. It's a new progressive day in the nation of Turkey, where faithful subjects wait to install new communication and surveillance technologies so everyone will be reminded how great the government is during mandatory midnight broadcasts. But as the satellite feed goes online, a strange black goo spreads like a virus. While it's obvious to some, it goes unnoticed to others, even when it's literally under their feet. The black goo is obviously an allegory, an unexpected consequence to mass distribution of data across instant communications, an unexpected byproduct of mass conformity. But like a war or political film, there are resistance fighters. First, there is a woman who resists aging. She trusts what the internet, <clears throat> I mean, what satellite television sells her. She practices on herself in what best described as medieval medicine. Literally blinded by promises, she becomes a statistic, and broadcasting continues. Then there is a teenage daughter resisting her arranged marriage. She doesn't defy her father. She's just being honest that she might not be all for it. While the family does not participate in satellite television, the influences mass communication has on their neighbors sweeps into their lives and quickly challenges the family's culture at the dinner table. Even after his daughter surrenders her future for what's best for the father and the government, her momentary ambivalence was enough to drive the father into homicidal rampage faster than you can say Jack Torrance. Next are the parents of a young boy. They are very fond of their high-speed satellite system they got for free. They don't need to choose from a wide variety of channels to entertain them. The government can choose for them. While they seem to be the ideal and trustworthy household, they resisted watching social justice messages to tend to the needs of their child. This display of insensitive intolerance is not tolerated, and the young boy is left to take shelter in a home where one cannot tell where the goo begins nor ends. There is the bureaucrat who runs the apartment building like a political compliance officer. He resists acknowledging the poor conditions, even when contractors get killed on the job. When the water turns poisonous or the heating system goes out, he demands Mehmet to tell everyone everything is okay. This is the new normal. Don't complain. Don't upset the mob with the truth. The government is too pure, too benign, too big to share the truth, Mehmet sees. The bureaucrat changes the truth by changing his opinions and everyone around him. He's an influencer. He will make his tenants drink poison water in the cold before making his government look bad. As long as there are digital eyes on everyone, Mehmet discovers the fates of the nonconformists don't matter. It's not the technology that seems everywhere, but the aura of power, cultural power to dictate every decision, every thought, every opinion, in the living room, in the kitchen, and in the bathroom. But when the allegory plays out, the long establishing surreal shots continue, like a dream you can't wake up from. While I appreciate long, dramatic pauses, the antenna takes it to new extremes. It runs out of energy too soon, as it looks to stretch the runtime longer than it needs to. The cinematography payoff from long pauses are more long pauses. Mehmet doesn't become the protagonist hero we anticipate. He doesn't stumble upon a great truth or overcomes a challenge. His experiences are just another string of strings to pull in a big ball of yarn. He's little more than a walking POV and eventually is unable to resist the nihilism the satellite broadcasting brings. That's how I describe the antenna 
nihilistic, where there is no hope and nothing matters. One dreary image painted over plaster followed by another. By the third act, the imagery becomes fatiguing as the cast dwindles and the story has nowhere to go. But would I recommend it? Yes, I would. I do so for its imagery and its allegories. If the antenna was produced in the United States, I feel the film would have been excoriated, but not in the ways you might think. And that is why I recommend you give it a watch, especially if you're looking to see something new and have nowhere to go. Because you won't see anything like this being made in the States in 2020. You will read online how some attribute the director's vision to current modern day Turkey and their suppression of journalism. But I take away that the English writing film critics really, really don't want you to make a connection with modern cancel culture censoring incorrect thinking using high-speed internet. But I ask that you think bigger and more dangerous, and notice the symbols of wireless data, the braggadocia of mass media, claiming victory over defeat by silencing dissent, leaving only the quiet and docile. You may ask, but Mr. G, what makes you think you can reinterpret what the director is trying to say? What gives you the right? I say, what makes you think I had? This very well is what the director is trying to warn us about. A culture polluted with goo. The illusions of a cancel culture using mass communications to enforce the angry mob conformity. You won't find a 90 pound woman body slamming muscle bound men in their fight against the patriarchy. There is no race or gender swapping. It's so brave and stunning. It has traditional families and a woman whose hobby is beauty products. Not much in misandry, though it does have a bad father with an unsympathetic, not-so-subtle reference to an honor killing. And most of all, not a word of English is spoken. Let me know in the comments below. What other films does the antenna remind you of? How would you rate it? Like, share, or subscribe if you enjoy this content and want to see more analysis into surreal films like this one. This is Mr. G of Synergy saying, If your drinking water is black, don't call the plumber, call a doctor. Check out my other videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.